church say amen again. Amen. Amen. Listen, Vacation Bible School is right around the corner. Amen. Amen. June 15th, excuse me, June 13th through the 15th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, God's Superheroes is the theme of EBS this year. We are asking all parents, grandparents, have your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids here. We are so excited what God is going to do through the youth and our children through VBS. So please make sure you mark those dates on your calendar. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much every Tuesday for joining in with me on our prayer call. It takes place at 7 a.m. Please share this ministry with your family, your loved ones, and your friends. And also, we do have Youth and Children's Church here. Amen. Let's give God praise for that. Amen. Amen. We're asking all children and youth, if you are a youth, what is it, 12 down, you should be with Sister Doreen. If you're 13 and up, you should be a youth church with me. Please allow the youth to be uh, dismissed right before praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do on this very special day. God, we want your spirit to fall fresh on us. God, have your way in this place. We come for no shape, form, or fashion. But God, we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us on today. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the Lord is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. Amen. And he has made us and not we ourselves. We are his sheep in his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name for the Lord is good. All the time we give him praise on today. Put your hands together one more time for the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, let's just love on the Lord on today. You can, you're free to stand on your feet and just wave your hands to give God thanks and praise for another day. Come on, God has been good to you. Amen. Amen. We give him thanks and praise on today. We come to worship him in spirit and in truth. And we want to take this opportunity to welcome all our visitors and guests and the mothers who are visiting with us on today. We say happy Mother's Day to you. Amen. For the first time here at SNBC. Amen. We thank God for you being here on today. And if you are worshiping with us virtually, we thank God for you. Please let us know who you are and where you're from so we can connect with you on a more personal level. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Barlow, First Lady Barlow, the entire SNBC family, you are welcome. blessing to give. The Bible is clear that God expects for us to give cheerfully. And we are so grateful to be a part of a church, a part of a ministry that gives above and beyond your tithe and offering. We want to encourage you to continue to give out of sacrifice and obedience as you always do. There are several ways you can give to the ministry here at Second Missionary Baptist Church. You can give through Cash App, GiveLify, PayPal, you can mail your tithing offering to the church. You can drop your tithing offering in the boxes behind you that are located on the wall as you leave the sanctuary. We want you to know that you're blessed in the city, that you're blessed in the field, that you're blessed when you come, and you're blessed when you go. How many know that you're blessed on today? Come on, somebody wave their hand like you know you're blessed. Come on, praise the Lord.
Lord, we thank you that we are blessed. Lord, we thank you that we are blessed. Father, we're not giving to be blessed because we're already blessed. Use this tithe and offering that has been given cheerfully and out of sacrifice and obedience for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say together, amen. Well, if you don't mind, if you are physically able, would you stand with me as we prepare to recite our mission statement on today? For you all that are worshiping with us, our mission statement reminds us of who we are as a local church and what we represent in this community. And we want to recite this with clarity and with conviction this morning. I see a people of God being one with God's vision for his kingdom. I see the saved reaching the unsaved and uncommitted. I see compassion at work in the lives of people. I see a community of believers in daily communion with the creator of life. Let us all say together. We see transformation. And let it start with me. Put your hands together for our mission statement on today. Amen. Amen. Psalm 24, verses 1 through 10, New King James Version. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place. He who has clean hands and pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Put your hands together for the King of glory this morning. You may be seated at this time. Amen. We're going to ask Reverend Ronnie Bond to come bless us with our intercessory prayer this morning. to get up this morning. But Father, we want to say thank you because of your grace and your mercy, you allowed us another opportunity to rise up. And you bid our golden moment to roll on just a little while longer. But Father, we come saying thank you this morning. Father, we come right now asking you, Father God, to continue to bless the sick all over this land and country. Father, bless those that in the hospital on their sick bed, Lord God. Father, go with them and stand by them. Bless those that's in the nursery home, dear Lord. Father, we pray right now, Father, that you bless that man, woman, child, boy, that's out there in the world, Father God, that don't know you and are pardon their sin. Father, we pray that you go with them, Father, and stand by them, Father. Give them the strength, Father, that one day they'll soon get to know you while they can, while the blood is running warm in their veins. Father, we ask you to continue to bless our pastor, Lord, the one that you put over this flock, Father God. Continue to give him the strength to preach your holy and divine word, Father God. Father, bless all our other ministers here, Lord God. 
Go with them and stand by them, Father God. Then, Father God, I want to ask you, Father God, to continue to bless me, Father, continue to give me the strength, Father, to be the servant that you have called me to be. Father God, continue to give me the strength to stand bold and proclaim your word, dear Lord. Now, Father God, when it's all over down here, when this old world can't afford us a home no longer, when we done gone in our room to come out no more, done stacked up hymn books and Bible to study the wars no more. Yes. Father God, we want you to meet us somewhere over yonder where every day will be Sunday. Sweet Sabbath will have no end, but it'll always be highly, highly, and never goodbye. Yes. Just my prayer for Christ's sake, Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
yes to your will and yes to your way, Lord. Check on those beats over there, amen. To see if they're going in the right direction, amen. I'm talking about the bass guitar, amen. Calling him out, amen. Amen. Uh, Jermaine, I have something for you before you leave. I got something for you. Amen. Thank God again for all our mothers. I'm not going to hold you long. I know that you all have a plan for you and, and some of these children that have been in your pocket and now it's time for you to get in their pockets. Amen. How's that? <laughs> Isn't that right, Max? Amen. Get your grandmama pocket all of them. Now it's time for grandmama to get in your pocket. Amen. I hope you saved up sufficient. Amen. Amen. Take it out to old Charlie. Some try to deal with vacation and to give glory to God. And occasions it's Mother's Day, but, but regardless what Mother's Day or any other day, we want to give glory to God. Amen. And there's a scripture that I want to share with you, a verse or two I want to share with you comes from the Old Testament. It's found in 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 23 to 27. It's part of the narrative. King James, NLT rather, says Then the king said, let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim living child is yours. Each say that the dead one belongs to the other. All right. Bring me a sword. So a sword was brought to the king. Then he said, cut the living child in two and give half to the one woman and woman who was the real mother of the living child and who loved him very much cried out oh no my lord give her 
other child. Please don't kill him. But the other woman said, all right. He will be neither yours nor mine. Divide him between us. question today what would you sacrifice to save your child's life what would you sacrifice to save your child's life let us pray Father God I come now Two thousand twenty four presents many challenges for motherhood. There's challenge that mothers have today that mothers didn't have years ago. Two thousand twenty four many mothers live in neighborhoods where children are no longer no longer play outdoors safely. The challenge of motherhood is somewhat difficult today. And yet when we look at the word of God, to be a mother has always meant that something has to be given up. To be a mother is to be one who's willing to sacrifice. And so I raised the question, what will you sacrifice to save your child's life? It's interesting that nestled in this Old Testament scripture, that the first thing that the king does is he has to decide between two women, between two mothers. But this is a story about the king of Sodom. Solomon, a young king, has enough sense to go to God, to ask God to give him the wisdom to judge his people. When we stand behind sacred desks, given certain positions, all of us need the wisdom of God that we can know the difference between right and wrong good and bad. So Solomon did not ask God for wealth, but he asked him for the ability to discern between good and bad, right and wrong. And it's interesting that the first assignment he has where he has to use what he asked God for is to make a decision between two mothers. Mothers. Here are two mothers they both have children. One has a child three days before the other one. But one mother is careless, and she lays on a child and perhaps suffocates her child. And then she snatched the other child and put that child in her arm and put the dead child in the other mother arm. And then has the audacity to say that the living child is my child and the dead child is your child. But this story is a very interesting story 
Because the question I ask is a real question. But here's a mother when the king makes a decision to kill the child, this mother decides to give up her child that her child may live. It may not seem like a whole lot, but it's a whole lot. To deny herself of every now and then kissing him or her on her forehead. Denying herself the opportunity to see that child grow up and have children of their own. This mother sacrificed the life of her child to deny the pain that she went through for the whole nine months. Denying herself of the birth pain that she had to suffer in order to give the child. She would rather see her child live rather than us see a child die. So the question to ask today, what will you give up to save your child's life? Can I be real in 2024? Will you give up trying to be your child's best friend and just be a mother who loves the child? Will you give up some party time and share a book about Jesus with your child? What will you sacrifice for your child's life? Your child needs you more than they ever need you. The world is trying to destroy our children. And the only way our children are going to be saved is mothers have to take some time with their child. Are you willing to deny yourself some pleasure right now in order for your child to grow up and have a better opportunity in their life? What will you sacrifice for your child's life? I know I'm telling the truth because most children get in gangs because nobody at home to love them like the gang loved them. What will you sacrifice to save your child life? I'm not just talking about mothers. I'm talking about daddies. You may not be married to the mother, but you're still the daddy. What will you give to save your child life? Children need us today. Too many children are dying before time. When I read the news and read my statistics, more children are dying from overdose than ever before. The sister says over a million children have died, young folks have died from overdose. What will you sacrifice? I'm being real now. To save your child's life. Your child needs you right now. The world is trying to take from them all of their potentials. The world is trying to rob them of all of the greatness that God has bestowed in them. What will you give up to save your child's life? I want to thank to somebody here. You say, I'm willing to give up some time and share my child with Jesus. Do I have a witness here? Can I be real today? I'm not going to hold you long. I know everybody have a story, but I want to tell a story about me. I know you have a story, but let me tell my story about a sacrifice that my mother made for me. One day I heard my mother talking about, and she said, Junior, I can't go to church right now. We don't have money for me to buy clothes and for the children to buy clothes. I went to church when I was a child. And I'm going to sacrifice and buy clothes for my children to go to church that they may know Jesus. What will you sacrifice that save your child's life? It's more than just coming to church on Sunday morning. But I got a witness today. God is my witness. It's because of my mom and my dad that put me in the church house, made that sacrifice like I could be in the church house that saved me, Bruce, when I was in college as a young adult. 
It was what God instilled in me as a child that kept me when I was a young duck. It was God instilled me the right and wrong. I ain't been perfect now, but God instilled in me the right and wrong. And when wrong could have taken me out, the right rose up. What will you sacrifice to save your child? I, I wish I had more time today, but I just want to ask that question, mothers. Because your children are, amen, are being threatened each and every day. They go to school, and we didn't have to go to school worry about somebody taking our life. But your child has to go to school and worry about somebody taking their life. What will you sacrifice to save your child's life? Well, I'm happy today to know, amen, that God see all of us as children. Amen. And I'm happy to tell you that he made a sacrifice for all of his children. Didn't he do it? The Bible said he gave us his only begotten son. That was a sacrifice. He gave that sacrifice that you and I might have a right to a tree of life. Do I have a witness in here? He gave that sacrifice that we could make it through this world in peace. He gave that sacrifice. He gave that sacrifice that I may have strength in my weakness. Do I have a witness here? Every now and then life will knock you down. But because he gave that sacrifice, God, he will pick us up from the mark and mar. Plant our feet on solid foundation. Do I have a witness here say, you thank God for the sacrifice that he made for you. You were going in the wrong direction. But because of the sacrifice that he made for you, something on the inside turned you around. Do I have a witness here? You are going in the wrong direction. But a little voice in you say, you are my child. Good God Almighty. I wish I had a little more time here. But I want to thank God today for my Lord and my Savior. Who died out on yonder hill for my sin. I want to thank God for my Savior. That's kept me in the midnight hour. Do I have a witness here? want to thank God for my Savior who watches over me all the time. The reason I'm here today is because the Lord had angels watching over me all night long. I'm talking about Jesus, Jesus, Mary, baby, Job, heart, porn in the valley, a bridge, over troubled water, Jesus, my morning star, the lily of my valley, Jesus, the same Jesus that died for my sin and your sin, the same Jesus the grave couldn't hold, the same Jesus that got up, didn't get up. On a third and pointed day, the same Jesus declared that all power was in his hand. The same Jesus, the same Jesus, Bruce. To one of these days, I don't know when, don't know where, might be sleeping in my grave, but that Jesus going to tell Gabriel to blow his trumpet and time has been won't be no more in all of God's children not some of us but all of God's children not some of us going to get up going to get up and I don't know about you but I'm going to say thank you Lord 
thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bringing me through many dangers. Call the snare. Thank you, Lord, for holding my hand. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord. Anybody want to thank him right now? Thank you, mothers. Thank you, mothers, for standing by you. Thank you, mothers, for holding you up. Thank you, mothers, for giving you strength. Say yeah. Say yeah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you. What will you sacrifice for your child life? What will you sacrifice for your child life? What will you sacrifice? for your child life. May God bless you. For mothers, to be a mother means that you have to sacrifice. To be a mother means that you got to give up something right now that your child may live. May God bless you and may God keep you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mothers. God would hold you. God would give you the strength that you need. Thank you. Let us stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for the great sacrifice that he gave for all of his children. He gave his son that you and I may live. He gave his son that we might live. We're going to extend a, a call for a Christian discipleship, for imitation of a Christian discipleship. Amen. If you're here today, if the Lord has spoken to your heart, the second Baptist is a place where you can work out your soul's salvation. We're standing an invitation. By a lot of Christian spirits of baptism, if there be one, will you come? Yes, Lord. Thanking God. Thanking God for the strength of our mothers. Thanking God for the strength of our mothers. If there be one, if there be another. The word is real. If there be one. Thank you, Lord. Invitation for Christmas discipleship. Letter. Christian spirits of baptism, everyone. Thank you, Lord. I thank God I fell in love with it. the best that you ever done. It is all. Yes. Do you feel protected when you're in his arms? Yes, Lord. That'd be another. Invitation being in sentence. I have 
church family. God is so good. He's continued to add. This morning, I want to say thank you to the mother for sacrificing. She's bringing her child to church, and he has decided that he wants to join. This is Travis the third. So he wants to join the church. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't, I'm going to hop down here. And uh, oh, Pastor got a little back problem. I'm going to hop down here. Amen. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your sincerity. Amen. God going to be with you. Amen. He's with you now. The very fact that you were bold enough to come up here because of what was on the inside of you. Okay. Remember, there's always something on the inside of you. The greater than that which on our side. Don't ever forget that. There's always something on the inside of you that's greater than that which on our side. Okay? Don't never forget that. Amen. Amen. Hey, huh? come, come he, he, amen. So he's coming as a candidate for baptism. Amen. Amen. Now we've had a lot of a lot of people join church here, here recently and uh Miss Paula's old evangelistic team, so I can't, a lot of folks I don't know. I got about seven statistics. I do know jazz, but I don't see Jasmine here today. So I'm going to do that next week. Amen. Give people their uh, membership for t- uh, certificate and their, the handbook to the church. Amen. Thank God for you. I hope I didn't keep you too long. But mothers, I'm being sincere. I'll tap my heart. The world is out to destroy your child. And you're going to have to make some sacrifice to save your child's life. Amen. Daddies, you may not be married to the mother, but you're going to have to make some sacrifice to save your child's life. Amen. And let us go home. Amen. Let me say now, we don't stop worshiping to, 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 to give offerings, but if you want to give an offering, you can give an offering as you leave the church on both sides. You see, have deacons on both sides, and you may give an offering then. But we don't stop worship to give offerings. So if you have not given an offering electronic, have not mailed it in, and you still want to give an offering, we, we believe in giving freely. Amen. And let me say this. I know we're going to say this. So you know where I'm coming from. When I first started pastoring, there used to be a tithe box in the middle of the church. And my predecessor didn't believe in, he believed in tithe, but he never asked the people to tithe. So when I came to pastor, I told people start tithing in the tithe box. Had some members one day jump me and said, you don't need to be having people coming up paying their tithes. And I never forget to let people want to pay the tithe, pay the tithe. You don't have to pay your tithe, you don't pay the tithe. I said, but one day that tithe box won't be needed that people learn how to give out their heart. You see, the Bible teaches a cheerful giver. And I want to instill in people Second Baptist, learn how to give because you know God has blessed you. Not because somebody's trying to force you to give, okay? Not because somebody's trying to make you feel guilty because you don't give. 
I trust God that when you learn how to give and know why you're giving, you will give unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us go home. Amen. God, we thank you for the occasion, but Lord, we thank you, first of all, for what you did for us, how you blessed us with your only begotten Son, because you loved us as your own. And now, Father, we pray for our mothers, that you continue to give them the strength, continue to encourage them and give them the boldness help them, O oh Lord, to make that necessary sacrifice for their child life. And now unto him that's able to keep us and present us faultless before a just and merciful Father. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church says together, 